What's your full name? Charlie Edgar Hill. <laughs> and what's your birth date? May 31, 1923. Very good. Tell me where you, where you grew up. Well, I grew up up in Lipscomb County, which borders Oklahoma on the north and on the east on the thing. And, and I went to high school at Arizette High School. And after high school, what did you do? Well, after high school, so I went in the Army. <laughs> I went to Army Air Corps on a thing. I went out, to, I had a brother out at uh, Hobbs, New Mexico, and they were setting up a medical detachment, detention from there or there in, in Hobbs. So uh, he was probably the highest uh, uh, non commissioned officer. So he and a bunch of doctors set up that medical detachment center there at Hobbs, out north of Hobbs on the thing. So I went out there to visit him. And that's that's where I enlisted into service on the thing. Then they took they sent me by bus up to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I was sworn in. Okay. And then uh, after I was sworn in, they sent me back to El Paso, which is Fort Bliss, on the thing to take my basic training. And that's where I took my basic training with El Paso. Great. And it wasn't all good. <laughs> but it was necessary. It was the first part of November. We had a tent. We had a fire going in the middle of our tent. Dad and sergeant come in and turned out the fire, and I nearly froze because I was so doggone cold. It was, it was the first part of November, and it was cold down there. Yeah. But uh, that was just the way it was. It was what it was. <laughs> so uh, I stayed there in um, Fort Bliss for quite a I don't know for how long. And then they transferred me up to Hobbs, New Mexico, which was that medical detachment center. And uh, I was originally set to be an me uh, airplane mechanic, but my, I know my brother had something to do with it. He had me switched over into the medical corps, that brother just older than I was. And so I went to the medical detachment there in, in Hobbs. So that's where I spent most of my time. And, and then one day the captain came in and said, me, uh, me and Bob Hawk, a boy, he since passed away, he was up in Wisconsin. He said, I've got a piece of paper here, it's got an X marked on it. And I've got uh, orders for him with you fellas, one of you fellas with the MOS, which was our Army classification deal, going to have to ship out. So um, old Bob was a sergeant and I was a corporal at the time. And I said, Bob, you, you want to draw first? He said, no, Charlie. He said, you go ahead and draw. So I drew. I got that son of a gun that had that X on it. So out I went. So that's when they sent me to, to Vancouver, Barracks, Washington, and then on overseas, on over to Marianas. And Bob, I understand, went to the Ferry Training Command, California, lucky sucker. <laughs> <laughs> but it is all right, you know. Uh, I I'd hate to see the draft again, but I'm not too sure the year of military service wouldn't be good for all these boys right out of high school, because okay. uh, it teaches you discipline, and you have to do things that are plumb darn ridiculous. You know it's ridiculous, and they know it's ridiculous, but you have to do it because it's orders. So you, you follow those orders and do it. So that's what, what it is. But uh, I think it would be good for these boys like, it, it, to teach them a lot of things that they don't get maybe or don't want to get when they're at home. Yeah. So, uh, but that's where it was. And then, like I say, I... Shipped out on the thing, didn't know where he was going. We went to, I uh, went into Pearl Harbor, and that's right after the Japs had, had bombed uh, Pearl Harbor, and there was steel, steam, and things coming out of the ocean where, yeah. on those ships that they, they sunk. And um, they put us up there with the 13th Replacement Depot, which was an infantry outfit. And I thought it was kind of odd that being in the Army Air Corps that we'd be going to the infantry. Well, didn't know at the time, but they they we practiced throwing hand grenades and we threw the M1, shot the M1 rifle, and we shot that grease gun, which is a 50 caliber machine gun, she hold right up to your shoulder. And then we also shot the one off the tripod. And uh, 
found out later that we were supposed to set up a, a an air base on the southern part of Japan. Well, of course, those darn Japs would have fought us tooth and nail if we'd have done that, but that's what we're supposed to do. Well, I, I knew when I was pulling that watch up at 3 o'clock in the morning that we'd change direction. And I told the boys, I said, I don't know where we're going, but we've changed direction from where we was originally going. Well, that's when they dropped the atomic bomb, so that's really they decided to take us into the Marianas instead of taking us into the southern part of Japan. So that's the reason we ended up in on the Marianas, and we landed on Tinian, and uh, we was there for a short period of time. I don't know how long, not very long, and then they flew some of us down to Guam, and uh, which was the larger part of the of the three islands. And uh, uh, I worked in the Addison General's office, the coding and decoding telegrams, and uh, so that's that's what it, that's what we did. Me and another fella. I guess because I was a dead gum clerk typist in high school, they, that's the reason they put us in there typing those doggone things up, you know, on the thing. But it is all right. It was, were telegrams incoming and outgoing telegrams? Well, yes, sir. If, if it was um, highly confidential on a the thing, then we had to deliver that in person. Other than that, we just deliver them out, you know, just by, uh, by kind of like a runner. Yeah. But uh, if it was a highly classified thing, we had to deliver those suckers ourselves okay. on a thing. And one, we had an old boy that come around. Well, there was two of us typing on the thing, typed up those things. Had an old boy that come around, and he'd he always read over the shoulders when one of them got up and do something. Well, mm -hmm. this uh, this buddy of mine that doing the others that said, or doing the other typing of those telegrams, uh, he typed up a phony one said everybody going to get to go home with so certain doing all that kind of stuff. And, and so, boy, that old boy, he come by reading, and then he got up and went to the bathroom. Well, this old kid that wasn't supposed to see us, the damn nosy, was reading everything. So he was reading that thing. So, boy, he spread the word all over the dadgum base at this, that. So uh, that word got out, and the captain come in and said, Hill, did you see a uh, telegram like that come across your desk? And I said, no, sir. I knew where it was, but I wasn't going to tell. I said, no, it didn't come across my desk. He said, well, there's one got out on the thing, so uh, uh, on the thing. And so that, that, old, but that old boy that come around to Sonosi on the thing, he's the one that spread the news on the thing. And this is a phony, a dadgum phony typing deal that old boy typed up. He just he was just setting this old boy up for good on the thing because he'd been looking at there uh, reading things that weren't supposed to read. So... That word got out, but I told him, no, I didn't do it. But I knew who did it, but I wasn't going to tell. I wasn't going to say anything. So we stayed there for I don't know how long we was in that working those things. And the captain, I was a corporal at the time, and the captain come in and said, Hill said, if you'll re-up, I'll make you a sergeant. I said, Colonel, if you made me a damn general, I wouldn't re-up. I want to go home. I've had enough. You know, so... That's what we did, but it was, it was all right. It was, it was an education, and I just know country boy never had been away from home anyhow, so, you know, it was kind of different for me, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody else. Yeah, nobody wants to go through that, but uh, I think I heard that you, was it when you were on Tinian or Guam that you saw the Enola Gay? I was, uh, I was landing there on Tinian. Whenever we landed on Tinian, it was sitting there out there on the air base, and, and I saw it sitting out there whenever I did, and that's just right after they'd got to dropping that bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They said that, they, which I didn't, didn't know at the time, but they stripped that thing down, took everything out of it, so it would make sure they was afraid that if they got over there and dropped that bomb, that we couldn't, they couldn't get back. So they, they stripped that thing down to the very minimum, except the atomic bomb, so they could, everything out of that Enola Gay, so they could make the round trip. Yeah, those, those, those boys had a job too, you know. But if the, it saved our butts, I'll, <laughs> I'll say that because we were, we were supposed to go in on the southern part of Japan and set up an air base. There was 1,300 of us in my outfit. And uh, 
like I say, those doggone Japs had fought us tooth and nail on the home base. Right. So I was, I was glad to, glad they done it. And I it is, it is all, was. you know, it just, it just saved us and it saved a lot of boys, yeah. you know, cause if they hadn't done that, we would have lost a lot of fellas. Yeah. There'd have been a lot of us who wouldn't have made it back on the thing, but that's just the way it was. Do you remember what um, outfit or what unit you were in? I was with uh, over there the 20th Air Force. I was with the um, uh, headquarters squadron, the 20th Air Force on Guam. Is one I was on Guam. And you were a corporal. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was working at Adjutant General's office. Like I say, we was coding, do coding those telegrams. Do you have any, uh, do you remember any of your best friends who you served with? Well, yeah, I had a had an awful good buddy. Uh, he came back to the state. I'm sure he's gone by now because he had, I don't know, something wrong with the rump on the thing, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what his trouble was, but I'm sure he's since passed away because I think he had cancer or some such sort of thing after we got back to the States. But we were the best of buddies over there. And then uh, when we was going across over there, we had uh, a dog on it. We was on a Merch Marine ship when we was going overseas and uh, had a big old Merch Marine. And then this Tommy Atra was a boxer. He had been a Golden Glove boxer. So we conned this uh, big old Marine and letting old Tommy take it on old Tommy. Well, old, old Tommy whipped him, but good on the thing. And, he, and Tommy probably was at 145 pounder. But he, he was, his eyes, he'd, he'd box so much and had so much scar tissue, he had to hold his head up like this to see out because the scar tissue on Bubby's eyes would drop down on the thing. And he was an awful fine fellow, but uh, we got that old, he whipped that big old Marine so we didn't have any more trouble after that on the thing. Cause that Marine was kind of, I bet he'd weigh 220 at least on the thing. And he was kind of throwing his weight around to everybody on the thing. And, and so we conned him into taking on old Tommy in boxing and old Tommy whipped him with good <laughs> on that ship going across on the thing. But it, oh, you know, like I say, I, I, I'd hate to see the draft again, but I think the service is good for me because I was an old country boy that never had been away from home. And, and it kind of teaches you a lot of responsibilities and, and nobody takes care of yourself except you. And if you don't fix your bed exactly right, those son of a guns, they'd come in, <laughs> they'd come in and uh, pitch a quarter on a deal on the bed. And if it didn't bounce back up where they catch it, they tore your dad gave them bed up and you still, you done it again. So you done a lot of things that you know was foolish, but that was orders. Looks like I've got some pictures over there to do something. <laughs> that is all my brothers. Yeah. yeah you want to talk about well, your brothers? Well, I'll you? tell you, yeah, if I can without choking up. Well, I thought if I went and enlisted that they wouldn't draft that oldest brother of mine, John. But because he was married and I, I was old and just out of high school and didn't make a difference to me on the thing, but uh, I had hopes that he didn't have to go, but they went ahead and drafted him anyhow. Well, Leonard went in, the old brother just so what I was, he went in in 1940, and uh, Walter went in in 41, and I went in 42, and then they drafted John in 43. Well, Walter landed on Omaha Beach on D-Day. Uh, the next oldest brother and, and the fellas on each side of him was killed on the thing they you know and he but he made it to the beach and then he was lost from his outfit for two or three days till he finally got back with him on the thing but and then john my oldest brother he fought with simpson's army through walter fought through uh, france and germany and then john will come through simpson's army up there and fought through belgium and holland my oldest brother did but somehow they were able to uh um, community, they, they knew where each other was all the time during the war on the thing. And uh, then Leonard, brother this old I was, he came up through Italy 
on a thing. And then, of course, they sent me over in the South Pacific on a thing. And I didn't, I didn't see any combat. I, I would have if they hadn't dropped the atomic bomb, would have lost our butts, but, but they dropped that and that saved us. Yes. That's amazing, you and well, your brothers spread out all over the right. world. Right, yes, there was. That's the way you see. Walt, Walt fought with, through France and Germany. He, he was in the engineers, and John drove a half track. He fought with Simpson's army through Belgium and Holland. And then Leonard come up through Italy, that brother this older than I was, come up through Italy. Hmm. Oh, it was one of those deals, you know. But I was lucky, you know. But I've been lucky all my life. I got, I got a hard work. Well, I've had good health, and then I've had a hard working old Beverly kind of takes care, takes care of me, takes care of me, so that helps. You're lucky if you got good health. That's right. You know, we don't think about it till the cows come home, and then it's too late. But uh, it's kind of something we just we just take for granted. When you came back from. <clears throat> from your service, what did what did you do then? I went back to work for the Department of Agriculture. See, I worked for them for a while before I went into service, just as a kid out of high school. Wow. Uh, where they got some aerial photographs, and we had to run run uh, ground control checks on them on the amazements uh, and everything. And uh, so I worked for them before I went into service. And then when I come back, I went right back to work for them. They hired me right back to work. Uh, and I started up in Lipscomb County as a, just as a clerk. And uh, then I finally got an office and I got to run an office on the thing. I retired and they put me as a county executive director, administrative officer, I think they called us back then. And uh, I worked there for quite some time. And then uh, I transferred from there to uh, Silverton. I thought I probably need some experience in cotton. And I hadn't had any up there, you know, it's it all wheat and, uh, Dry and, and air, air, air milo, such things. That, so I transferred to uh, Briscoe County at Silverton and stayed there for 10 months. And then I got a chance uh, in Lamb County, which was a little field, and uh, it paid more money. They used to have kind of have us classified A, B, C, and D. Well, uh, uh, I was, uh, Lamb County was paid more money than Alfred, and I was offered it. So I went then Lamb County and I was there at Littlefield for four years and then transferred up to Castro County, which was here and stayed there until I retired. So it, it, was, it, was, it was a good job, you know. How many years did you work? Forty something years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I worked, um, of course, that, that, you know, my military service counted too. I was there for the. Well, three years, three months, and 17 days. <laughs> you don't you don't forget that, how long you was in that, but I was in there a little over three years, and that counted towards my retirement deal, so that's what I did. Well, how many kids do you have? Sir? How many kids do you have? Well, I see, I was, I was previously married before Beverly and I got married, and I got two by the older of them, Terry and Leanne, and then Beverly and I have two, Tracy and, and Todd. Okay. Yeah, I've got four all together. And uh, Terry worked in um, Washington, D.C. there for quite some time. I guess he still lives there in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And then uh, Leanne lives in Oklahoma now on a thing. And then, of course, I've got old Todd that worked for, for Edward Jones here at... Uh, he works for Edward Jones, the financial deal, and then Tracy's a school teacher. Okay. So they've all done real well. I've been real fortunate. And then old Beverly, she spends her time working for me. <laughs> or, or working me or something. <laughs> what all did you do at Lipscomb Courthouse? Huh? What all did you do at Lipscomb well, Courthouse? Well, you know, I, I was... While I was there, I worked for the Department of Agriculture for ASC, or back then it was 
PMA or some such deal, I forget the initials now. Every time they'd change the administration, they'd change the initials, you know. And then I also mowed the dad and gum lawn, the courthouse lawn, I mowed it, and then I also was secretary of the draft board. <laughs> so I had a, had a lot of jobs on the thing. I don't think any of them paid very much money, but evidently I had to have a lot of jobs to make a living, you know. You wore a lot of hats. Yes, sir. What, but, hat, what hat did you wear when the bad tornado went through? What, Sonny? When the bad tornado went through. Well, I was, uh, yeah, I was the youngest, um, uh, oh, what was it? Chairman of the Red Cross. Chairman of the Red Cross. I was the youngest in the state of Texas. They said at that time, the old judge got me conned into that. Uh, after I got out of service, he, he conned me into that. So I was uh, secretary of that on the thing. So um, when they had that tornado at Higgins, they, uh, we, uh, I had to go over there and work, and we set up a, our headquarters in the doggone school building. That was about the only thing that wasn't, wasn't blown away in Higgins. That tornado come right down through the middle of high, the, of this, uh, high, the main street in Higgins, mm -hmm. Texas. And Is that? Uh, in 47, I believe it was. What year? I believe it was 47. Oh, okay. I believe that's right. I'll kind of forget, you know. But I believe, I believe it was in 47. Okay. And um, I know we had a, I had a place out there on the old farm, and, and uh, doggone, when we had a bed down in the basement, we just go down and spend the night in that dad gum basement. They're having so doggone many tornadoes, and then, uh, I, like I say, I was chairman of the Red Cross there in in in, uh, in Lipscomb County, and we'd set up our headquarters there in the gymnasium. There's the only thing that wasn't blown away in in Higgins, because it went right down through Main Street. And uh, I had a good buddy on the thing, old Arlie Stout on the thing. He was, they found him in the pool hall. He was, you know, on the thing, that tornado got him. Oh, uh, been a lot of water under the bridge in 97 years. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, I'll make sure the whole world sees it. Well, <laughs> it it you know, know it is all it is all right. I I wouldn't want any more of it. That's like like I say when that captain come in and said the tail out up. I was a corporal out out up here to a sergeant if you'll re up. And I said I wouldn't if you made me a gosh darn general. I'm ready to go home. I've had enough. That's when I was on Guam. But you know uh, it it it's good. It it was, it was for an old car, a kid that's never been taught discipline. You to you to your learn discipline in there, because if you don't, you got a choice. Yeah. Slam and none, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know it. It is it is okay. It 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 is good, probably good for me, because I never had been away from home. And, but I I wouldn't recommend it for anybody else offhand. Well, thank you for what you did. Thank you for your service. Well, it is all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's awful nice of you, but. Um, and your brothers. Well, yeah, they they pay the ultimate price on the thing. Like I say, Walter landed there on the old Palm Beach on D Day, and and uh, he fought with through France and Germany, and then John fought through with Simpson's army through Belgium and Holland, and then old Leonard, brother soldier I was, come up through Italy, and then I went on to South Pacific, but I didn't see any combat. I would have then dropped the atomic bomb. The, we, we were, we were, that's where we was headed. And I knew we'd seen, I, I'd pull and watch at three o'clock in the morning. And like I was telling you a while ago, I knew where the North Star was. So I was kind of watching that on the thing because, God, I sang every song I ever knew and some I didn't know on there. Because <laughs> we'd run without any lights on, you know, it's pretty lonesome up there at nights on the thing. And so, uh, uh, I, like I told the boys the next morning, I said, I don't know where we're going but we've changed directions on the thing. And that's when they dropped the atomic bomb, which we didn't know at the time. And uh, that's when the reason it took us into the Marianas instead of going into the southern part of Japan. So it, it is all right. It was just a job.
Great.